Ever looked at a self-portrait and kind of wished you could get inside the artist's head for a minute? Like, what's the story behind that pose? What were they thinking about when they chose those objects? It's like wanting a peek behind the curtain, right? Exactly. And today's deep dive is all about peeling back those layers. We're diving into Patrick McGrath Muniz's 2020 piece, Fourth Quarantine. Ah, yes. It's such a striking piece. It really is, and it feels so relevant, even now. But before we get too deep into the meaning, let's set the stage for our listeners. What are we actually looking at in Fourth Quarantine? Okay, so picture this. The artist, dressed kind of like a monk, sits at this table in his studio. He's got this contemplative look on his face, pencil hovering over a journal. Classic artist at work scene, right? Too straightforward enough so far. Right. But then you start noticing the details, and that's where things get really interesting. Behind him, almost out of nowhere, there's this chain hand emerging. And get this, it's offering a bottle of rum. Okay, I know that's just weird. Tell me about it. Huh. And that's not all. His laptop's open to a picture of this sunny seaside villa on the wall. A print of Hygieia, the Greek goddess of health. And right next to her, like a true sign of the times, a bottle of Purell. It's like he's created this whole still life within a self-portrait. Exactly. And each object feels so deliberate, like it's representing some aspect of his internal world during quarantine. You've got the yearning for escape with the villa, the need for reassurance with Hygieia. And don't forget that ever-present temptation, courtesy of the rum. Oh, yeah. Can't forget the rum. It's that push and pull, isn't it? Between the internal and the external, you have the artist's carefully constructed interior world. And then you have that view out the window which almost feels at odds with the rest of the scene. Oh yeah, I was just getting to that. It's like stepping into a whole different world when your eye reaches that window. Right, because there you have a grackle perched outside, a black cat prowling below. Even a bench the artist's sitting on is sculpted into the shape of a lion. Mooney's deliberately places these pairings, the cat inside and outside, the bat on the rum label mirroring the bird to blur the lines between what's real and what's symbolic. Hold on. The bat on the rum label mirroring the bird. I totally missed that. What do you make of that connection? It feels significant, but I can't quite put my finger on why. It's like those pairings, the cat, the bat, the bird, they all have this double meaning, right? Like they could be totally mundane, everyday things. Or they could represent something deeper. It's like those old still life paintings where a wilting flower is a big memento mori moment. But in this case, it's a pandemic, a cat. And it's rum. It is rum, yeah. yeah. And that chain hand offering it up. One of the most striking images in the whole piece, in my opinion. Definitely eye-catching. It's like, oh, loaded with meaning. <laughs> A metaphor for, oh, I don't know. Something we all felt during that time, you know? Totally. And what's fascinating here is how Muniz captures that feeling of temptation. You know that feeling, right? Like that almost primal urge to seek comfort, to escape especially when we're alone with our own thoughts for too long. Oh, tell me about it. That quarantine brain was real, let me tell you. Right, and the chained hand, it's like, it suggests this struggle, this feeling of being tethered to those vices, whether it's alcohol or procrastination, or that endless scroll through social media. It's like, suddenly it's 3 p.m. and you're still in your pajamas, mainlining coffee and doom scrolling the news. And it's like, wait, what day is it again? Did I even shower yesterday? Exactly, and remember, for Muniz, this was his fourth self-imposed isolation, the fourth. Clearly, this is someone who knew those internal battles well. Maybe by the fourth time around, you just learn to appreciate the absurdity of it all. Maybe, maybe. But there's still that tension, right? I mean, you have the rum, and then on the wall you have Hygieia, goddess of health. It's like he's acknowledging those two sides of ourselves. The part that wants to indulge, let loose, give in and the part that's striving for something more, some kind of ideal, even in the middle of a pandemic when the world feels like it's falling apart. And it's not just Hygieia. Don't forget on the laptop. It's open to a picture of a villa by the sea, that yearning for escape, you know, hmm? for open spaces, for a reality that's different from our own. It's incredibly relatable even now. At least I think so. Definitely. And that brings us back to that view out the window, which. I gotta be honest, has been bugging me this whole time. Really? What is yeah. it about that window? It's like, on the one hand, you have the open sky, the bird in flight. Freedom, right. But then there's that black cat lurking below. It just feels ominous, you know? It's like even the outside world that Muniz is depicting is full of its own unknowns and anxieties. It's like he's saying, sure, you can escape your four walls, but you can't escape yourself, right? All that stuff you're carrying around inside. 
That comes along for the ride, whether you like it or not. Exactly. It's not just about quarantine, is it? It's about the human condition. That's a good way to put it. That feeling of being caught between yearning and uncertainty. Wanting to escape, but also knowing that real peace, well, it has to come from within. It's something we all deal with, you know, pandemic or no pandemic. It's interesting, though, that he chose to set this scene during a pandemic. I mean, you mentioned he'd been through periods of isolation before. Yeah, this is his fourth. His fourth. But there's something about that shared experience, right? That global sense of, we're all in this together. It adds another layer to the painting, don't you think? Definitely. And it makes you wonder, what would our pandemic self-portraits look like? What objects would we include? What would they say about our experience of that time? Oh, man. Good question. I think mine would have to include like a dozen half-written novels, an industrial-sized bag of coffee beans, maybe a pair of noise-canceling headphones for all that Zoom fatigue. What about you? Huh. I can't say I'd have any half-written novels lying around, but maybe a stack of art books reaching the ceiling. Makes sense. Or maybe a telescope too. I don't know why, but I spent a lot of time staring at the stars during that time. It's like looking for a bigger perspective, right? Yeah, exactly. A reminder that there's a whole universe out there yeah. beyond our immediate worries. And, you know, that sense of perspective, I think that comes through in Munya's piece too. It does. It's this really personal, intimate look at one artist's experience, but it also connects to something so much bigger. And that's why it stays with you, I think. Mm -hmm. Even now, a few years later, it captures something really essential about what it means to be human. That resilience, that capacity for introspection, that constant search for meaning, even when the world feels chaotic. This deep dive has really changed how I see this piece. It's gone from being this interesting snapshot of a moment in time to something, well, something much deeper, more thought provoking. It makes you think. It does. And it reminds you that art can be this incredibly powerful tool for processing our experiences individually and collectively. It's how we make sense of the world, right? <laughs> exactly. So listeners, as we wrap up this deep dive, here's a final thought for you to ponder. What would your self-portrait look like? What objects would tell your story? And what would your view outside the window reveal? Thanks for joining us. Until next time, keep exploring. Thank you very much for sticking around till the end. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to like, hit that subscribe button, and tap the notification bell so you don't miss out on future content. Also, check out the video on the screen right now for more insights and inspiration. Your support means everything to me and helps this channel grow. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.